this presentation is the result of a SHIRT grant that Miles and I received a couple of years ago to investigate male participation in FSL programs. I have quite a bit of information to get through and I tend to talk pretty quickly. So if you find that you're having a hard time keeping up, I did create that uh, little brochure there and I used small enough font that I was able to include most of the stuff in the brochure. I'm just going to use the arrow keys. My goals for the presentation are to uh, address a series of specific questions, namely what is the current state of male participation in FSL and in foreign language programs internationally, uh, why are males less interested in language learning and when and how should this problem be addressed. Uh, more generally speaking, I'm hoping that the presentation will raise awareness of the, um, the state of male participation in FSL and also to provide somewhat of a framework for uh, future research to hopefully um, enhance our understanding of this topic. Uh, I'm going to begin with a, a very brief overview of the state of male participation in FSL and in foreign language programs internationally. Uh, one thing I hope to get across in this presentation is that there hasn't been a whole lot of research uh, on this topic um, in a Canadian context. So Miles and I felt that it was important, necessary to look at the issue from a broader perspective and hopefully gain some important insights, from use, some useful insights from the um, international studies. And um, I'm then going to move on to provide a summary of some of the reasons for this r lack of male interest in language learning as reported in previous research. And throughout the, threaded throughout the entire discussion, I'll, I also will provide a series of questions that Miles and I feel have yet to be addressed in related research. And uh, we feel that if these questions were addressed in future research, it would help to further our understanding of this topic. So the first question I want to address is what is the current state of male participation in FSL and in foreign language programs internationally? Uh, <clears throat> like I mentioned, there hasn't been a whole lot of research done on this topic in, in Canada. Uh, the few studies that have been done have demonstrated similar uh, results that boys represent about 70% of those students who drop out of core French after uh, completing the mandatory years in high school. Um, there's also very limited data to suggest that males are also less interested in language learning and alternative F FSL programs um, like, like immersion. Um, even in, in French first language schools, there's some evidence to suggest that boys are less interested in learning French than are their female peers. <clears throat> While this information in itself is, you know, is cause for concern, it's important to keep in mind that these are just snapshots of certain programs at, uh, at certain times and in certain areas of the country. Uh, not all regions are represented here, so I think that, that in itself calls for greater research, more research on the topic. Here are a series of questions that uh, I feel should be addressed in the future. What are enrollment trends by gender in alternative FSL programs? Are male participation rates different when students are within geographical proximity of Quebec? or Ottawa, where French is often needed for employment purposes. Uh, what are enrollment trends in areas where French is required past grade 9? There, there's some evidence to suggest that as boys mature beyond grade 9, their attitudes toward learning French change. So if they were required to take French even till grade, nine, till grade 10, for, exa for example, their attitudes may have changed by that point and maybe they'd be more likely to continue on studying French. Uh, and finally, when boys do continue to study French in high school, how does their achievement and motivation in French compare to, to girls? The, the lack of male interest in language learning is not something that's unique to Canada, um, or to French for that matter. Uh, there's actually been quite a bit of growing interest in this topic in recent years in several English-speaking countries, Australia, New Zealand, uh, England, Scotland, even the United States. And, um, as you can see, the, the results from these studies uh, support the earlier, my earlier work and the work by Nett and Riggs and Hewlett. Males are significantly underrepresented in these programs, um, ranging from 10 to 35 percent of the total enrollment in uh, advanced level foreign language classes. <clears throat> However, it's, it's important to, to note that in the eyes of adolescent boys, not all languages are perceived equally. Uh, in the study by Carr and Powell's, that involved 10 different languages, uh, several different countries, it was found that certain languages, like Chinese, uh, like Latin, were, were um, viewed much more favorably by, by boys, were uh, much more popular amongst boys than European languages, specifically Italian and French. Uh, similar results were found in a study by William Burden and Landvers. In that study, it was um, reported that 
boys have much more favorable attitudes toward learning German than toward learning French. So I, I'm, I feel that just the fact that certain languages are viewed more positively by boys than others is also worthy of further investigation. And here are a series of questions that I, I feel should be addressed in future research. How does male enrollment in French compare with enrollment in other foreign languages offered in Canada? For example, is the percentage of male enrollment in Spanish or German higher than in FSL? What is it about languages like Latin, Chinese, or German that makes them more appealing to certain boys? And how could the attributes of popular languages amongst adolescent boys be applied to languages that are less popular? Having described the current state of uh, male interest in language learning, I now want to move on to look at some of the reasons as suggested in previous research for this lack of interest. One common explanation is that males are simply less able language learners. Um, there are some, albeit dated studies, that have demonstrated males have, uh, that males are inferior language learners in comparison with girls. And even though these studies are, are quite dated, um, in a much more recent study, Carr found that a lot of second and foreign language teachers um, uphold these beliefs. They believe, that, they believe that girls are better language learners, that girls have advantages in the classroom. Girls and boys have very different learning styles, and uh, the learning styles that uh, characterize males are not necessarily advantageous in a second language classroom. Uh, however, <clears throat> again, it's important to keep in mind that this biological argument is, uh, is very hotly debated. There, it's, the studies are dated. The results are um, inconclusive, inconsistent. There are studies that show that um, <clears throat> Males have some advantages in some areas, and most of the studies show insignificant differences between the two sexes. Uh, learners themselves reject the, the notion that one sex is better than the other. And personally, I, I also feel that that argument, the biological argument, does little to explain how come millions of boys around the world do learn languages successfully. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, more recent research is sort of looking away from the whole biological argument and focusing its attention more on societal um, explanations behind the lack of male interest in language learning. <clears throat> However, I, due, to the, due to the pervasiveness of this biological argument, the belief of this, um, that males are less able language learners, I feel that more research needs to be done to see what kind of impact that has on, on male motivation and achievement. Here are some possible questions to address in the future. How pervasive is the commonly held belief of female language learning superiority? How does this belief affect male performance and motivation in the FSL classroom? In what ways do FSL teachers treat boys differently in the classroom? To what extent do they attempt to create male-friendly classrooms? And does the belief among second foreign language teachers that males are less able language learners result in boys receiving less teacher attention in the classroom? Uh, the issue of teaching methodology has uh, surfaced in many studies that have looked at lack of male interest in language, language learning. Um, the, the boys in these studies, they, the programs that they talk about most critically are those programs that are very traditionally delivered, uh, very teacher-centered, um, a lot of repetition, little use of the target language, uh, very little student control. And, and the issue of control was something that was raised in my, in my doctoral work. Uh, male students perceive themselves to have uh, less control in the in the FSL classroom, less control over their uh, less control over events in the classroom, and also less control over um, their own success and failure in the classroom. And control is um, you know, self determination. Control is an important factor in one's second language motivation. So, so it is an important issue to consider. I, I do think that the idea that one sex boys boys need more control than the other kind of supports the biological argument that one sex that boys are different from girls. But what came across in my research and what has come across in these studies that I have read is that both, both sexes really crave more control in the, in the classroom. It's just that they respond differently to the lack of control. Uh, I had one female student that I interviewed mention that um, you know, boys will kind of kick and scream in the classroom until they get what they want, whereas the girls will sort of grin and bear it. Um, you know, those, they're a little bit more compliant, it seems, although they, they both do want more control in the classroom. Uh, these repeated complaints that I've read over and over again in numerous studies, again, warrant further investigation of this, of this, of this issue. Uh, some questions to address are, to what extent is the communicative approach to teaching being used in FSL classrooms? These repeated complaints of focusing on grammar, little use of the target language, a lot of repetition, they don't seem to suggest that communicative approach is being used. Uh, 
how would male motivation change in FSL classrooms that were less teacher-centered and offered more student control? Which pedagogical strategies are effective for reaching males in FSL classes and why? And which pedagogical strategies are used by teachers who manage to retain high numbers of males in their FSL classrooms? Um, socioeconomics as being an influence in male interest in language learning was raised by Karen Powells in 2006 in that study that involved boys in um, public schools and also boys in private schools. It was, these, it was the working class boys in the public schools that were much more averse to language learning than the uh, more affluent boys in, these private, in the private schools. Uh, the working class boys didn't see language learning as being relevant to them. They uh, didn't envision themselves going um, overseas in the near future. Um, whereas the, the boys in the private schools, they maybe had a parent who spoke another language and maybe they had already been overseas. So they saw the cultural benefits of learning another language. Um, that being said, the, uh, the, I guess the career-related uselessness of learning, of learning a foreign language outweighed the, the, the cultural benefits of, of learning another language. These boys, they, they thought that learning a language would lead to a career as a teacher or a travel agent, a career that wasn't very lucrative and that wasn't going to help them to maintain the, their current lifestyle. So even though they saw the cultural benefits of it, they still were probably going to drop it. So, um, the fact that there hasn't been a whole lot of research on this topic itself, again, calls for more, for more research. Uh, how do attitudes and motivation toward the study of French in Canada differ among socioeconomic groups? How would the, pr the prospect of traveling abroad or to Quebec increase male motivation to learn French in Canada? How do public and private schools differ with respect to the promotion of French studies in Canada? And what are student beliefs and perceptions about the career-related benefits of learning French in this country? There's been numerous studies that have suggested that males avoid second language study because it's thought to be less than male appropriate behavior. Um, certain subjects are traditionally viewed as more male appropriate than others and French isn't one of those subjects unfortunately. And it's, it's unfortunate that uh, we're, looking off, we're often looking at adolescent boys in Canada who are given the choice whether or not to study French because adolescence is really a crucial period in the development of one's gender identity. Um, <clears throat> Boys at that age are very sensitive to sex stereotypes and will, will avoid act, any activity that is going to call into question their masculinity. Uh, at, at that age, adolescent boys tend to see masculinity as um, you know, very black and white. You're either masculine or you're not masculine. Um, and by, ex by not being masculine, by extension, you're gay. Now, there, there was a, an air of homophobia in my doctoral work. Um, the word gay was never mentioned by any, anyone that I interviewed, but it was alluded to with words like girly and sissy and wuss. Um, and, you know, it's, and that really seems to be um, problematic. It's particularly problematic with respect to French, because for whatever reason there are, a lot of, there are a lot of feminine associations attached to the French language, more so than German, for example. Um, you know, you think of French, you think of romance, high fashion, that kind, of, that kind of thing. Things that tend to have more feminine connotations. And um, in the study by Carr and Powell's, it was stated that French had the monopoly on femininity. And in that study that involved 10 different languages, French routinely had the lowest male participation rates. The, um, the fact that what is traditionally viewed as male appropriate behavior is influencing or is limiting boys' choices in life, I think, again, um, warrants further investigation. Here are some possible questions to address in the future. Why are boys who pursue academic excellence in French viewed as less than masculine compared to boys who do poorly? In what ways do male and female teachers and administrators contribute to and or reinforce the perception that French is effeminate and a more appropriate field of study for girls and boys? What can be done to change the perception that French is more appropriate for females? What can parents, teachers, and students do to broaden the concept of masculinity to include subjects like French and in what way do gay males' participation rates, motivation, and achievement in French differ from straight males? Um, fearing that they'll be viewed as less than, less than masculine, uh, boys will often underachieve or, or misbehave in the FSL classroom. Uh, <clears throat> I had one student say to me that it's cooler for a boy in grade 9 core French to get kicked out of class than to be seen as keen. So, um, 
some, re some research out of the UK has, been, um, has suggested that one way of getting around, of alleviating this problem is to offer single sex foreign language classes. Because in the absence of girls, boys don't feel the need to differentiate themselves from girls. <laughs> they don't feel the need to put on this, you know, really like butch persona, you know, like macho persona. Um, <clears throat> and there, ha there have been quite a few studies on that topic that have shown some positive results. Uh, the boys feel less anxious in the classroom, that they, um, their achievement has increased. However, not all of the results are positive. Some have shown that the behavior in the classes deteriorates and that it, they become very challenging for the teacher. I actually just finished, well, I'm still analyzing the data from a study that I conducted in North Carolina on student motivation to learn, sorry, the impact of single sex instruction on motivation to learn Spanish. And um, again, I had very mixed results. Uh, the, the boys were very, were very resistant at first to the idea of being in an only all-male class, but as the semester progressed, they started to like it, and they did say that they felt less anxious, that they were able to discuss things they never would discuss if girls were in the class. They felt that they were more focused. They liked it, and so did their male teacher. The females, on the other hand, had the polar opposite experience. They liked it at the beginning and hated it at the end. <laughs> they felt that the class was full of a bunch of really catty girls who were not getting along. <laughs> And they, they weren't getting a lot, they didn't like their female teacher, the noise level was unbearable. <laughs> I, I interviewed 10 girls and all 10 said the same thing, but the noise level was just too, too much. Um, just the fact that the results are so mixed, and there hasn't been a whole lot of research done here in North America on the topic, again, necessitates more work. Here are some questions to address. What is the impact of single sex instruction on male and female motivation to learn French? How do the dynamics of single sex and co-ed second or foreign language settings differ? How do teaching strategies differ in single-sex environments from co-ed classrooms? In what ways are teachers able to better meet the needs of their students in single-sex classes? And are single-sex second or foreign language classes offered in co-ed schools as effective as those offered in entirely single-sex schools? It's also been suggested that the lack of encouragement boys receive to study French is another, reason, is another possible reason why they're less um, represented in French classrooms. Uh, there have been studies have shown that that encouragement is more important, is more influential for boys when it comes to subject choice than it is for girls. And uh, my research, the work of Net and Riggs and Hewlett, have all suggested, have both suggested that males receive less encouragement to study French than do than do females. Um, far from being encouraged by their by their male peers, they are discouraged. And again, homophobia seems to be surfacing. Um, <clears throat> some of the reasons behind. These gender differences in encouragement, uh, again, I think relate to, so, to societal perceptions. Parents, teachers, peers realize that, that it's, it's perceived as being more male appropriate. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, guidance counselors in my study were found, it, it was found that guidance counselors were assuming boys would not take French into grade 10, so they were scheduling courses that were very popular amongst boys at the same time as, as core French. They, were, they had grade 10, core French at the same time as grade 10 co-ed phys ed. So, you know, um, and I think that the depreciated status of FSL instruction may also have some kind of some influence on this because, you know, if I was a parent and my son was not doing well in French class, didn't like it, and I was always getting the same message that French is not important, you know, through budget cuts or the fact that it's not a required subject, am I going to keep on encouraging my son? My son? Perhaps not. Um, again, there hasn't been a whole lot of work done on this topic, so I feel that there are some additional questions to address. How does the amount of encouragement students receive to study languages vary according to the language of study? For example, are boys encouraged less to study French in Canada than other languages like Spanish or German? How do current language policies and school board practices bias against male interest and enrollment in FSL programs? I'm just about done. Uh, what role do guidance counselors play in the encouragement of boys to study French in high school? And uh, how do current curricula and graduation requirements discourage males from studying French? And the last topic I wanted to discuss was the influence of male teachers. It, it could be hypothesized that, it, that males would see learning French as more male appropriate behavior if there were more male French teachers. Um, a recent survey by ETFO reported that about 10% about of all elementary core French teachers are male. And it was ve very similar numbers with French immersion. I, I contacted faculties of education across Canada 
and learned that about 11% of the students who are enrolled in FSL methodology courses are, are male. Um, and of course, that's going to, just going to perpetuate the perception that it's more appropriate for females. And there's all, there are also some studies, to, some data to suggest that males prefer to have male teachers, that they're more comfortable to communicate in classes taught by a male. So that's just an, one additional hurdle um, you know, for, for males to jump over. Um, last question to address, how does the gender of the teacher affect student motivation and achievement in the FSL classroom? What causes males to steer away from a career in teaching second and foreign languages? What percentage of male teachers with FSL qualifications in Canada are not currently teaching French? What can be done to lure these teachers back to, into the classroom? And what can be done to recruit more male FSL teachers? And that is it. <laughs>